I think if you look at the LNG bunkering, it has evolved over the years. It started with ship to shore infrastructure that's being developed, but nowadays we've started to see companies installing LNG bunkering vessels. And that has taken off in Europe. In 2017, for instance, we've seen Shell install the Cadissa LNG bunkering vessel in Rotterdam. We've also seen NG Zeebrugge LNG bunkering vessel being done in Belgium. And that has really propelled the industry to consider using LNG for fuel. And that's beginning to expand as well. If you look in Europe once again, Total is looking to install the 18,600 cubic meters LNG bunkering vessel. And that's really in line with the long-term contract that they've signed with CMA CGM. In addition to that, when we look in Asia, there are some developments taking place as well. In Singapore, there are two companies, Fuel LNG and Pavilion Gas, that have both ordered LNG bunkering vessels, and that will propel the industry in the Singapore market. When we look at Northeast Asia, K-Line has also installed LNG bunkering vessels. And we've seen in Korea, H-Line is looking to convert to LNG cape size carriers that will ply the iron ore route between South Korea and Australia. All these developments are just showing that the infrastructure is developing and there has been a response in terms of vessel owners considering LNG seriously. I think if you look at the shipping market today, a lot of companies are looking at alternative fuels and that is really because of the IMO regulations that will be implemented in January 2020. Uh, these regulations would restrict the fuel use on sulfur emissions from 3.5% to 0.5%. And there are some alternatives that vessel owners uh, can use in order to meet these new regulations. You can either choose marine gas oil, low sulfur fuel oil, or LNG. And LNG has many advantages when you're looking at it over the next 20 to 30 years. Vessel owners are looking to future-proof their ships. And LNG is potentially cleaner and it has less carbon emissions compared to high sulfur fuel oil. And we're beginning to see you know, different vessel owners, different product classes actually choosing LNG today. One example is Carnival. They are one of the largest cruise ship operators in the world. And they have just taken delivery of a large cruise ship vessel costing 200 million, the Ida Nova, and this is using LNG. In their next generation of ships, they are looking to use LNG as well. So it's not just the cruise ships, but it's also container vessels. It's also the product tankers and it's the bulk carriers. These four segments, which travels large distances, comprising of large vessels, are looking at LNG as an alternative. So in IHS market, when we look out to 2040, we think that this market will be growing quite significantly. We expect to be 40 million tons of LNG demand from international and the domestic market. And when you look at it, when you compare it like a country, it's going to be almost as large as South Korea itself. So it's definitely something that we are quite excited about and we'll be watching quite carefully.